Yes, ma'am. Good morning, everybody. Today is Tuesday, February the 8th, and I'm calling to uh, call to order the Management and Internal Services Committee meeting. I am Chairman Connie Malier, and we have a quorum. I'd like to start the, uh, start the meeting with an invocation. If you'll bow your heads with me, please. Dear Lord, thank you so much for, for the day that you've given us, and thank you for the rights we have, including the rights to assemble and to govern ourselves. Thank you for our wonderful county, and be with us today as we make decisions for our county, our citizens, our constituents, our neighbors, our friends, our family. Some of these decisions are hard, but please be with us to help us make these decisions in fairness and in truth. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please join me for the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Y'all forgive me, I failed to mention in my, uh, in my prayer this morning, please be with uh, the family of Jana Beth Wells as she has lost her, her mother this week. As I mentioned, we have a, a quorum and we need to approve the minutes of the previous meeting. Gentlemen? Motion to approve. Second. So moved. Do we have any um, changes to the agenda? Not to my knowledge, Madam Chair. Very good. Let's move right in um, to debate. Mr. Johnson, what do you have? What do you have on the list for us today? The uh, first item we have for you is our 2022 agreement with uh, Project Access. This is something that's budgeted every year. Project Access has provided the uh, paperwork and the backup information for the number of patients that they're treating in Columbia County. The budgeted amount remains at $25,000. It's been this number for many years, and staff recommends approving the services agreement with Project Access. Gentlemen, what are your wishes? I think track. I mean, do we know how many folks they actually serve? We do, yeah. So, um, and I don't, I don't know that's in the backup, I don't believe. Um, but I, I, I did ask for that. We, we audit it every year. Um, it's, it's in the hundreds. It's not a ton of people, but the people that are on it uh, are uh, extremely dependent on it. Is there already a motion? Motion to end. Second. Okay, so moved. Next. Uh, next item you have for your consideration is a property tax refund. Uh, we've been working with the tax commissioner's office on this issue. Uh, Mr. Mark Hopper has requested this refund. Uh, he purchased the property in 1988, and he's been billed annually for 4.96 acres. Uh, the property, a uh, recent property survey showed that it was 4.77 acres, so there's a, a 0.19 acre difference there. Um, the total amount of the refund is $855.90, which is based on the billings from 1990 through 2020 and allowing 5% interest, and you, you'll have a calculation there in your in your backup. Um, you, as you know, by law, we are only required to go back three years, but the tax commissioner is recommending that we go back the full time here, and, and typically the board has taken that into consideration. So the staff recommends approval of the refund for Mr. Hopper in the amount of $855.90 for overpayment of property taxes. Move to consent. Second. So move. Thank you. Juvenile court independent contract. Yeah, this is a uh, contract with Angela Chambers to be the new court reporter. Uh, the previous court reporter uh, passed away. Uh, there, there is a, a change in this. There's, sorry, well, change from the last contract. This is less than we were paying the previous, um, the previous contractor, uh, and she's going to be providing be providing twice as much service. Terry or Judge, did I leave something out? Terry, you want to come up? you're here. Do you have any up. comments, Terry? <clears throat> Johnson's correct. Miss Brenda Taylor um, unfortunately passed away, but um, at the time she was providing one day of service every Friday for $1,922.34. Miss Chambers, who's filled in for her, she's agreed to come under contract with us and work two days a week for the sum of $1,733.34. We're getting twice the service and saving $190. So that's a good sent quickly. Fantastic. <laughs> Second. So moved. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. 
And next, we'd like to change the commission meeting from Master's Week to a week earlier. Mr. Johnson? That's correct. So our meeting is scheduled for April the 5th. That's during Master's Week. Uh, in the past, we have uh, moved that date since uh, the a lot of people are not in town that week. So we're asking to move the April 5th, 2022 meeting to March 29th, 2022. Staff recommends approval. Does that have to go to the debate agenda or can it go to consent? It can go to consent. Go to consent. Second. So moved. Next. Next item we have your consideration is revision of the comprehensive policy manual. It's actually two sections here, 104.1 and 236.1, as it relates to catastrophic leave. Um, back in 2012, uh, we had a change to our policy manual uh, that took the catastrophic leave uh, from 15 years of credible service to 25 years of credible service. And there's also some caveats in there for employees who reach age 65. They had to have 20 years of service. So it actually increased. Um, and there was no grandfathering or anything like that. It just changed, and we, we dealt with it. Uh, in a recent um, audit of our policy, we found that that we never changed the definition for the catastrophic leave incentive. So there was a conflict with our policy manual where the, where the definition said it was 15 years, but the policy itself said it was 25 years. So we got to look at this and started surveying some other counties and looking around, and, and, and I made the decision to bring this to your attention to ask that we, if we had to revise it anyway, but ask that we revise the policy to read the employees with 20 years or more of credible service will get this catastrophic leave incentive. Um, I will say that we've run the numbers uh, we, we have a, I, I believe it was 74% of our workforce have less than 15 years here at Columbia County. Um, so uh, where's Elizabeth? Oh, she's, yeah, there she is. So and if you have any numbers you want to throw out here, Elizabeth, feel free to, um, but we only had as people far, as far as taking advantage of this had five or six last year. Only five people got it. It's their leave. They they have gotten, you know, this is their leave that they built up. And um, we just think that it's fair to go to 20 years uh, and make kind of a um, a compromise between, you know, what was 15, which was probably too liberal, and 25, which is probably a little bit too strenuous. So staff recommends approval to the changes of the policy as, as presented. When I reviewed this, it's, it's fair. Scott and I went through the numbers and went through the reasoning. Can I ask a technical question? The sure. word credible is in here several times. I tried to look up the word credible in the legal text of it, and I kept coming up with the word creditable. Is that the same thing? Is that two different words? Because in the, in yeah, the so, recitals, credible service is not defined. Yeah, we can look at, we can, we can look at credible county service um, to define that. We can go back and look at the definition of that. What it basically means, just so we can put it out to the public, is that... Um, the amount of service the employee has been given credit for. So there, there are some times where employees have a break in service where they won't have, you know, years of credible service uh, that they didn't get any credit for that particular year. Um, so, but yeah, I think that's a good idea is looking at a definition there. So we'll continue to look at that as well. So can we put this on the, maybe the debate agenda and have conversations with our other, sure. our other, um, sure. Move to debate. counterparts. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Next. Uh, the next item we have is the uh, Judicial Council ARPA grant, grant addendum. This is kind of a second round for our uh, our judicial circuit. Uh, it's the, uh, in the amount of $185,286 uh, to allow for a court administrator and some equipment uh, for the marshal's office. Staff has reviewed this with our chief judge, Judge Blanchard, uh, and uh, everything seems to be in order for them to apply for this grant. Uh, obviously, it needs to go through this board. <laughs> Uh, our senior judge is here, so I don't know, Judge Blanchard, if you have anything to add, but if there's any questions about this, we'll be glad to answer them. Part of it is a little bit from the magistrate's office for dealing with a lot of the evictions, but throughout the state, it's my understanding they're cutting a good bit of that, so $20,000 of that is cut from the request uh, by providing two bailiffs for 40 hours to help the senior judges. It will give equipment to the magistrate's office. Uh, it will provide that. And uh, I think that we'll have a court administrator with her salary and equipment as well is basically what we're coming back to. So. so the grant will be enough to cover for one year, two years? Well, eventually it'll be three years. Three years? It's, it's, it's a, it's a one-year grant. They, they're telling us that we can apply for it for up to three years. And apply every year. 
Correct. We have to apply every year. Is that on a cycle so we don't miss it? Because this isn't in the budget. Yes, that, that is correct. That's right. We are going to talk about these positions during budget this year. I've met with, with the chief judge. I said senior judge. I'm sorry, judge. With our chief I've judge. I've called a lot worse. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> I, met with our, I met with our chief judge. We're going we're gonna to look at what absolutely has to, what we need for long term for the stability of our judicial circuit and see if we can start working in some of these things to our budget. All of these things, it's not their intent that all of this will, will come to Columbia County to be part of our budget. But some of it will need to. So as part of the budget process, I'm going to start looking at this each year. That is, that is our understanding. We're not asking for it forever unless it's viable. Who well, it, that was my concern, that it was we get a little bit of grant money and then it's a permanent, mm -hmm. permanent expense. I understand that. So. I, I've had a lecture from... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. I'm not believing that. <laughs> Trust me. Moved and consent. But it was with a grant. <laughs> <laughs> moved and seconded, Thank so you, moved. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Um, next, we have something from DFAX. Uh, yeah, the last item I believe that I have is the reappointment of uh, three people to the Department of Family and Children's Services Board. These are all reappointments. Uh, Sheila Waming, Waman, rather, uh, her term ending June 30, 2024. Mr. Vernon Thomas, whose term will end June 30, 2025. And Janice Terrell Smith, who would end June 30, 2026. The staff recommends approval. Move to consent. Second. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Internal services. Yes, the first item I have for your review is the purchase of abandoned chipper for roads and bridges. This is a budgeted <laughs> item, and Mason Tractor and Equipment is the contract holder with Sourcewell that we have an agreement with, and they are also the only Georgia bandit dealer. They have provided a quote of $102,083.20, which is $2,411.80 under budget, so staff recommends approval. Just the standard questions. So we're replacing one, and we'll. So we are in this case. We are replacing one. Um, we had one of our other departments, our, our maintenance department that does our landscape, that's picked up a lot of our landscape. They actually put one of these in their budget last year, and we told them to hold off on that. Uh, that they don't use it as much as Rose and Bridges did. So when Rose and Bridges purchased their new one, we're going to pass this old one down to maintenance to use. Is that correct? Move to consent. Second. So move, Doug. It's nice. I saw a picture, and it's like tandem axle. It even has the strobe lights. Chip in. I saw chip in. all the stuff. We could chip everything. It's very nice. Permission for Commissioner Malier to uh, play with the chipper. Yeah, I understand. Now, <laughs> Got it. I apologize. Oh, <laughs> Next. The next item is the purchase of some vehicles for the sheriff's office. We budgeted four replacement vehicles for the sheriff's office at $29,000 per unit. We're, as you know, we're having trouble finding vehicles these days, especially pursuit vehicles. And um, we missed the order cutoff date, so we were not able to bid them. Originally, we did find some vehicles through the source well contract, but they were over budget by almost $4,000 each. So we decided to hold off. We have since found three vehicles from Walker Jones Automotive. These are only $334 over budget each. So, and we did receive permission from the county manager to issue a letter of intent so that they would hold these vehicles for us. So staff recommends purchasing three Chevy Traverses from Walker Jones Automotive for the total amount of $88,002. Three, not four. Three, we're still looking for the fourth one. Move to consent. Uh, second. So moved. Next. And the final item I have for you is the annual approval of bank accounts. You have provided, or I've provided you a list of these accounts. These are the ones uh, for which a commissioner is a signer on. And we just present these every year for your information and approval. Move to consent with a statement that they need to really make sure that they button this stuff down because I have a checking account with one of the one of these and when I went on and looked at the checking account all of a sudden there were two accounts on my little phone so I called the person and said you know I really don't want this I mean, why is this and it turned out it was a county somehow because I had signed it oh I got, yes sir we have had that issue in the past so we will make sure that, that they understand not to do that yeah they took it off and it 
we, we've got it now. I don't, I don't believe any of these now are part of mobile banking. I think any of the, that particular bank, all of these accounts are not eligible. We don't do mobile banking. Mm -hmm. So that, that's been changed internally. Very good. Moved consent. Second. So moved. Anything else, Leanne? That's it. Michael, how much money are you spend? <laughs> not as much as sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> A little more than others. <clears throat> Uh, the first item I have for your consideration is uh, is actually no cost. It's the creation of a private road name uh, called Firefly Trail. We have a situation that's developed on Ray Owens Road where we have uh, development that's taking place down a, a long uh, a shared driveway. And uh, in essence, we run out of uh, uh, street addresses that we can assign there without getting things jumbled up. So GIS reached out to the people that live on this, uh, dr this driveway, um, queried them about if they'd be willing to be on a private road called Firefly Trail. Um, there was no dissent from that, so we're just asking. Move to consent. Second. So moved. Next. Second item I have for you is a master services agreement with the city of Grovetown. Um, I've brought master services agreements uh, before you in the past, basically the foundational document that we use for our broadband customers. Um, the city reached out to us about providing uh, Wi-Fi at two of their parks. So we've got this agreement, in, or we need this agreement in place in order to establish that relationship and uh, get fiber to where it needs to be so that they can uh, take advantage of that. Uh, it's a three-year contract, and our revenue over that will be $15,400. Moved consent. Second. So moved. Next. Uh, next item I have for you is uh, Justice Center Annex Courtroom Audiovisual Solutions. Uh, probably aware that a modern courtroom requires a lot of audio visual. Uh, this one is, is no different. This is going to be the uh, essentially the, the juvenile courtroom that's going to be in the Justice Center Annex. Um, they currently have some equipment left over from when TaxSlayer was in the building. <coughs> so what this proposal is, is remove the existing construction. Construction will take place, and if you have any questions about the actual construction of the building, um, Steve Prather is here to that. Once the construction is done, or when they get to a point where the AV is back in place, then the, the company, uh, Net Planner, that we're running the project will come and install the remainder of the system. And we are reusing what we can. Good tax, uh, stewards of the taxpayers' money. And uh, the overall cost of this is uh, it's sixty six thousand eight hundred twenty seven and dollars and thirty eight cents. Because of problems with supply chains and hardware costs, we want to ask for a little bit more uh, to cover cover any changes in price between now and October when the building is going to be finished. So we're asking for permission to spend up to seventy three thousand five hundred out of uh, TAC funds. Staff would recommend. It. Move to consent with a question on just when is it going to be done, the building done? When is it done? October. Is what We've got that coming up on the DPS agenda. I believe that contract on the next agenda so we could okay. go into that a little bit further. further. We have a motion, Mr. Second. Chair. Thank you. <clears throat> so moved. Um, is there anything else? Uh, one final item. It's a contract with uh, ATG for backup internet connectivity at the Performing Arts Center. Um, we have some of the major functions at the PAC that – that utilize um, our broadband. Uh, and then that goes through uh, another solution to provide wireless access all over the building. This involves Ticketmaster, and it also involves all of the, uh, the point of sale systems in the building, sell beverages and, 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 uh, and food. So um, it's essential for us to have a backup in place for that. So we collected bids, and the uh, and advanced technology group, ATG, uh, is the, uh, the best option there, for one gig of connectivity at 4,800. So we have a three-year term for them that's proposed for a grand total of fourteen four hundred. So it's a guaranteed they'll hold it at four hundred a month for the whole three years. Yes, ma'am. Gentlemen, moved to consent. Second. So moved. <coughs> Mr. Blanchard, anything else? Ma'am. Very good. Do we have any other committees that I missed? And none. Do we have any legal matters? The legal matters. Let's move right into staff reports, please. So just the first item for your information is our personnel savings uh, so far through 2022. You can see that number there total to date is in excess of $600,000. Requires no action. Question. Any um, openings do we have right now that are unfilled? I get that report. Elizabeth, do you know how many off the top of your head we have? Yeah, 
it's it's a it's a significant amount. We even you know we, we did really well when we changed the uh, the pay structure here, but now everybody else is changing their pay structure too, and we're having a really hard time filling positions, and not just entry level positions. We're having a hard time filling all of our positions, um, and we are choosy, so we don't just hire a warm body. We hire the best, and and it's taken some time to do that. So. Sounds real cool to say, oh, we saved six hundred thousand yeah. dollars, but that's at the detriment of the other people who are picking up this. That's time. right. Well, that six hundred thousand dollars, we're going to save that money, and when we start talking about uh, increases for merit this year, we need to look at the employees that are doing the work for all these employees that are not here. So we got people doing double jobs. So well, the good news is, it looks like our applicant flow is still up like eighty percent over yes. last year for January. So. Yep. Many of those um, openings are are operations versus say. Sheriff, EMS, kind of, do we know? Just off the top I don't even head. think we're tracking the sheriffs <laughs> out of that 100, are we? Oh, that's not even part of it? Are we tracking the sheriffs out of that 100? Are his included in that 100? Yes. Oh, are they? Okay. He was down, my understanding was we were down between 60 and 70 positions and the sheriff was down 30, so that, prop, that math makes sense unless I'm missing something. They are included because working on the budget right okay. now, I've been looking at vacancies, and okay. we had 115 the day I did it. Okay. Well, there you go. And that included the sheriff. Considering we have right. 1,300 employees, one out of every yep. 13 is, is missing. Chief Wallen, are you doing okay over there? How many are you missing? He's short a few. Did it get better or worse? Okay, good. <laughs> Good. All right. Thank you for that information. Well, Ray of sunshine. Been out on it. <laughs> All right. Um, and internal services, you have a report? Yes. The first report for you is the year-to-date budget report. This is for the month ended January 31st. We should be performing around 58.3%, and everyone is performing well at this time. I don't have any questions on this. Gentlemen, are you doing? Okay, next. The next item is the sales tax report. This is through the month of December. We actually received our first $3 million check. So collections now are at an annualized percentage increase of 15.27%. And for the record, how do we get that 15%? That is from last, I guess this is December last. It's a 12-month rolling average. So every month it's updated based on the previous 12 months. That's a pretty good... Moving along in a pretty good little clip. So, um, key thing for us to remember, I read where the Atlanta Fed is projecting growth at 0.1% for the first quarter. In terms of economy, that's a screeching halt. So, I'm, I'm just watching this number. You know, we've had all these big numbers, high inflation, but the growth of the economy is, is at least they're tracking it to be flat for the first time <coughs> in years, in the first quarter. So, we just need to be aware of our sales tax revenue and what we spend it on. That's true. Is there any any other comments on, on that report? And an investment report? Yes, attached is the list of investments for your information. I don't have any questions on that one, gentlemen. No, ma'am. All right. That concludes our reports today. Is there any other commissioner or public comment? Seeing none, I have nothing for executive session, and we will adjourn this meeting and come back for Commissioner Skinner's uh, committee in minutes. three or four minutes. Thank you.